Wow. Wow. So many familiar faces. Wow. Yes. Nice to see you all. So cool. Oh my gosh. You're all here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I don't have to travel that far in order to see you all. Yeah. Well, Anne, schön, dass du hier bist. So yeah. nice to see you. And all of you, really. I'm really a little bit overwhelmed by all these familiar faces, and it's so good to see you again. Yeah, yeah. Anne is in her office in Munich. I'm here in Loveland, Colorado, and she's in Munich. I already said that. And, uh, and um, so we were going to talk about homeopathy today and how it heals, really. And uh, I wanted to give a little background. Anne and I met in the early 90s in Seattle at a conference from the International Foundation of Homeopathy. Anne, do you remember that? Those were three days. With oh, yes. Yes. The and first time we met, oh, right? Yeah. It was the first time we met oh, in the night. Yeah, it right? was. Yeah. And it was, um, it was also very interesting right because it was the 90s and so uh -huh. much happened with homeopathy at the time. Do you remember that? There were conferences. Ah, sure, it was the beginning of something very yeah. new. Yeah. 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 Um, even in Germany. Yeah. yeah the, the, the homeopathy you have it got founded the International and European uh, Foundations of Homeopathy were, were started. Uh, schools opened doors around the world in this school in 1990. So it, it was all in this time frame. And yeah. of, of all the presentations at that Seattle conference, I was mostly touched by Anna's presentation. Yeah, because it was in German, your mother tongue, yeah? Yeah, it was in German. And then the way Anne, how Anne used the language and how she followed the patient. And um, it was an unusual remedy. It was Kali Iodatum, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember this, yeah. Yeah, and for me it was... I remember all my cute cases, for sure. Yeah. yeah. To me, it was a bit like uh, the, the real homecoming to homeopathy. So, because uh, I learned everything in this country and, um, and in England, so not in German. So, Anne, well, now we can do this. You came then after the conference, you came to Colorado several times and lots of you have met Anne and, uh, and you still now after 30 years contribute to the school's curriculum, right? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because we got friends in that moment, you know, in the 90s. We yeah. were friends in that moment, yeah. And that's why I came to visit you and give all my knowledge to the students of your school. I mean, we had uh, just generated in Germany in a school, yeah, a school in education training, an organization so that homeopathy could come better into this world. This was our intention, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I wanted to, to give this to the whole world in a way. That's why we, we made the European Council of uh, Classical Homeopathy and the International Council of Classical Homeopathy. And this was when the world got wider and wider and, and so on. Hopefully, it's going to expand in the future. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so when we started the school, our curriculum was based on the guidelines from the International Council of Homeopathy. Sure. I didn't know much about homeopathy then. I was really glad that somebody had already worked it all out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and then we went from there and you came quite a few times and did some great presentations on unusual topics. And now um, maybe you could tell us all how you got to homeopathy. Oh yes, I can tell you how I came to it. It was, um, oh, how I got to it. It was, I was a teacher before I went into this uh, homeopathy area. I had no idea about homeopathy at all in, in this time. I was young, I was a teacher, I had two little children and I was a teacher in secondary school. And one year I got a very difficult student 
everybody told me, uh, my, my fellows, uh, colleagues, they told me, you know, this is such a difficult guy. He was Turkish, he came, the parents were working here in Germany, they lived under very difficult circumstances. So, and in, in, indeed, the boy was very difficult. By that time I was young and dynamic, can you imagine? So I said, you know, I will phone your parents, I will tell your parents, you know, what you are doing is not right. He was disturbing the, 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 the lessons. He, he got up, he did whatever he was not allowed to do. So, and after this day when I said, okay, done, you know, I will inform your parents. He came to me and he said, can I, tell, can I talk to you? Yes, sure. He said, when you come to my parents and tell this to my father, my father will beat me to death. And I said, okay, then tell me, tell me your life. And he began, as we do it in homeopathy, by that time I had no idea what I was doing. He, I asked him, tell me your life. And he told me his complete life. And I was so shocked about what I heard because, you know, I was not used to this kind of uh, talks to hear the depths of the suffering of a 16 year old boy. And so I said to him, okay, I don't know what I will do with you, but at least I have a plan. What I learned that I, when I don't know anything, I do something. It's not, knowing it's more doing. This is what I learned in my life. Uh, and I can give this as a kind of wisdom that we, if we, sometimes we don't know anything, we just do something. So, and we went to the library next door and he got a, a license for the library so that I could do his home, he could do his homework in the library. He got, uh, got he went home to mother, uh, had uh, food, uh, lunch, there and then went to the library and did the homework so that he got better in school because he was disturbing the the, the lessons because he was not um, he had no he had never done the work he has to do at home so in that moment he got better I talked to all the 50 teachers we had, we were 50 teachers in school. I talked to all of them and we agreed that we are going to help this boy as a kind of project. Huh? He said, this is our new project. We will help, will help this boy to come out of this terrible circumstances. I'm not talking about what was wrong in this family. Terrible, you know, this is how it is in our daily clinic with patients nowadays. And what, what happened, he got better and better. But after three months, he told me every month a dream. He had every month the same dream. In this dream, he was falling into a huge hole, hole and at the end, there was a light. I had no clue what to say. So I said to him, follow this light. Okay. And uh, months passed by every week he came with the same dream he told me every week the same dream and at the end of May the the light was it, the light got smaller and smaller and smaller and at the end of May the light was out so and I got scared I said what is this I went to our principal he said oh my god you know this are Turkish people have a lot of fantasy. I said, this is not fantasy. I don't know what it is, but let's wait and well, let's, let's do something. And then we arranged a, a psychotherapist for him. I said, he needs a man because it's a boy and comes from a Turkish community, something completely different to our German community. So, and what, what, what happened at the end, the last day in school, my children was waiting in the car for m mommy to go home with them. Uh, he said to me, the boy said to me, what shall I do the next six weeks? Oh, I said, you study for next year because this will be the examination year. Yeah. And uh, he said, oh, I don't know. I can't see you for the next six weeks. Uh, to be honest, I said, okay, good is enough what I have done. And 
at the end of the uh, summer holidays, when he came back to school, the boy had committed suicide. In that moment, I realized that I could not help this boy. So, and that was a moment when I began to rethink, been I, uh, am I a teacher or what shall I do? And, and then I began to study psychotherapy and in and uh, in psycho for for um, in order to practice psychotherapy in Germany, you have to have a special license, and this license can be the Heilpraktika, or you are a doctor. But I was not a doctor, a medical doctor. I I had to have the Heilpraktika education, which, which is like naturopath, just like naturopath. Yes, yeah. right, uh, and. This, uh, in that moment, I saw homeopathy. I was got introduced into homeopathy. And I saw this is a situation where you can bind the understanding of the psyche of a, of a person together with homeopathic remedies. So right. this is how I began. Right. Yeah, it took me some years, you can imagine. I stopped teaching, uh, teaching yeah. in school. So this is how I began. It's like life takes us there, right? Yeah, this is what I learned. That if, even if you, if you have no clue, follow your own story. Follow your own steps. Yes. As, as good to say, you, you will never come that far when you don't, uh, only in that moment, you, so he says like this, only in that moment, you don't know where to go. You will come very far. So in that moment, I didn't know where to go, but how I am now. Right. I yeah. Yeah. Practice. yeah. And this was the right decision. It's said like this. Still, until today, I love to, um, to treat children mm -hmm. and young people and because they need to understand the few, they are for the future. They need to understand themselves, but not analyze themselves. They have to have a, an understanding of the world. Right. And this is for sure they will get in homeopathy, I'm sure. With all the homeopathic treatment, it will help them to go into a different life. Yeah. Do you, um, do you remember when you took your first, uh, when you gave your first remedy? Oh yeah, this, uh, this is another story. You want to hear another story? Another story, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This was, a, I, you know, in the beginning, you know how it is in the beginning. I hope I speak to all of you. I look at all your pictures, yeah. I hope I speak to all of you. In the beginning, it's difficult. You see the patient and you don't know what to give. Oh, isn't it true? Please say not like this. So I see that you agree. It's very difficult sometimes. Yeah. So, but this was not, I began with it. I had only the remedies I know from Vithulkas. By that time we had the stolen essences, essences from Vithulkas. I studied them, you know, I was very eager to study all the remedies which were available by that time. And, uh, and I was invited at a party. At this party was a, a very famous um, television um, um, director. Hmm? This di television director had um, visited one of, the, uh, one of the groups who did a, a sailing trip around the world because it was reported for, the tele for, for television. So when he, and he flew there, went on the boat, and when he left the boat, he got dizzy. And this dizziness did not disappear. You know, you had this vertigo, the yeah. whole boat was- Yeah, he was like- In his head. head. Yeah, yeah, right. So, and this had happened half a year ago. He went to all the professors in Munich in order to get rid of the dizziness, but it, never, it did not disappear. So, and I went to this party and he said at this party to me, 
I heard you are dealing with so little tiny pills. Do you have something for, for vertigo? And I said, okay, I know, I know him. I know him very well because we were friends. We were a group of friends. And I said, you know, as far as I know you, I would give you phosphorus because you are a person, whenever he enters a room, the room was full of light because he was a very intelligent, very prominent, very, uh, you know, open hearted. So I said, I can give you something if you want to. Okay. He said, yes, sure. Because nothing helped ever. Yeah. And he came, I gave him, I didn't do an interview, you know, I gave him the little pills and guess what happened? The vertigo disappeared. Wow. I was so proud. I said, my God, if this guy who is in television in a high position, perhaps we can bring homeopathy to television. Okay, what happened? I was really proud. When in, normally in Germany, all the, the directors of the different television programs, they meet, they meet every second or third month and discuss what to do. So, and now he got rid of the, of the vertigo, the dizziness. So, and everybody asked him at the conference, um, at their conferences when they met, uh, what is with your vertigo? Because everybody knew that he has his vertigo. And he said, you know, very easy. You go to Anishati in Munich, you get <laughs> some pills and this will disappear. Oh, then I got telephone calls. Uh, secretary of this director, secretary of this director. Everybody had different problems. I said, oh my God, what am I doing with this? Yeah, the first director came, had 10, 10 minutes or 15 minutes. The, the driver was sitting outside waiting for him for the next 10 minutes. So, and he had uh, stomach ulcers. The only remedy I knew was Nax Vomica. It did not work. Okay, because I did not understand the complete story. What I learned, the first lesson I learned is that if it is going to happen, it will happen. And if my ego is involved in it, because I thought by that time, perhaps we can make homeopathy bigger and bigger and bigger. In that moment, I will fail. This is what the lesson I had by that time, yeah. And this continued in my life that I trust. I trust whatever is going to happen. Yeah. I trust myself. Well, and you did build a big practice um, despite not making it that time. Yeah, sure. Sure, everybody knows that, it's, uh, then, that uh, cure, healing is not makeable. Healing will happen. And homeopathy is of is good help. Homeopathy is very important in this process. But not only, you know, there there are even more talks talks with patient, talks about life situation because we we cannot you cannot change something if if the whole world is going into the wrong direction, if the whole family is completely off or is in a difficult situation, you cannot give a remedy and believe it will always be immediately be better. It will go step by step. This is one of the reasons why I never give up. Yeah. I have patients who come to me for 15, 20 years. Is this how you become a good homeopath? Yeah, I mean, I can suggest that everybody should think about this, that every homeopath should consider that there is not the remedy and uh, the complete life is going to be fine, always. It can happen because these are the miracles we love, yeah? We want to see them. Uh, we see miracles, but not every the situation is a miracle. Yeah? yeah. And we have to guide them through. One of my patients said, 
the chief warned me, she said, she's very severely sick, I must admit. She has an autoimmune disease and we are going step by step. She's much better than she was before. And I said, oh my God, this remedy is still not right, not the right remedy. And she said, oh, don't worry. She was... Uh, helping me don't worry she said you are navigating me through my life oh I said tell me about how is it when you you get navigated <laughs> you know the navigator you know she said you know it's like because in that moment people tell me something what is for me like new in that moment, I go into it because then I understand the patient better because now I understood she needs navigation and the remedy has, has to have the navigation process too. This was a patient who wants to be guided, taken by the hand. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, there we have uh, patients coming in and they're telling us about their symptoms and we're looking at their pathology and uh, we're looking it all up in the repertory and so forth. And then we try to sum it all up and find the most likely solution, right? But what is it really? What are we really treating with homeopathy? Yeah, this is a good question. A question. A very good question. What, what are we doing with homeopathy? Let's try to understand first, what are we doing? The patient comes with headache or stomach ache or whatsoever, yeah? We try to understand what is behind the stomach ache, behind the headache, behind all the symptoms. Why do we need to know this? Why? If this is a good question. We could say, okay, we need only to know uh, uh, headache, better by ha ha ha, worse by ha ha ha, et cetera. But this doesn't work, unfortunately, only, only, because in, in homeopathy, we have only remedies available, which were once, once in a, once in time, once in a while, there were substances, we diluted, tr uh, diluted, uh, um, um, uh, sarcastic, triturated it, sarcastic. We did as long uh, until the spirit is out and no substance is in it anymore. Can you agree with what I'm saying? This is how we do it. We just separate <laughs> the matter like from the spirit. Yeah, only, yeah. only yeah. energy is left. Only the energy is left. The spirit is left. And what do we do with the spirit? We homeopaths, uh, it's very strange, believe that now the spirit is in the alcohol. Or, yeah? And we put the alcohol on little tiny pills. These little tiny pills we give um, students or um, uh, students in order to take them and generate symptoms. These symptoms we put together, I have done this with so many provings, I, uh, put them together and put, put the, all the proving symptoms in our repertory. So this, this is the, the spirit of the substance generates the symptoms. So, and now we have to understand the spirit of the, of the, of the problem of the patient in order to act, you know, Similar, similar, ähnliches möge durch ähnliches geheilt werden. What similar. is this sentence in English? Yeah, similar is being healed by similar. Yes, right. So, but we don't similar with the symptoms, we similar with the spirit of the symptoms. So, I mean, and this is not an easy process. It must be, it, it is easy. In that moment, you have just... Um, sore throat or, or, or injured your leg or so. This could be easy. But in deeper cases, for example, cancer, uh, MS, it is more difficult to understand what is the depth of the problem. Yes, this is a question I have. 
So mm -hmm. you say that every time when you talk about case taking, you always talk about the depth. So mm -hmm. how do we get to the depth of the case? Yeah, I mean, you know, in the, we, we began in the 90s with the symptoms, yeah? And we tried to match the symptoms, start to understand what we have learned that we have to go sometimes deeper in order to understand the whole story of the symptom. And in the, in the change of the, to the millennium, Zankaran developed the understanding of a deeper process. And I went with, in, because I was often in India, I visited very often India, uh, I went into it with him and with his understanding. Because you see in India, people have already in their whole tradition a deeper understanding of situations, of life situations. And so we try to understand it on different levels. Yeah. So you think in India people do have a better connection to their feeling, to their... I, I, I mean, I have to go back to what I'm saying. Healing is a process. It's not something we can do. It can happen. I am very humble in this situation because I've seen already so many patients I really wanted to help, but it didn't, it didn't work out. But sometimes people get help and I have no clue why it helped. Okay, the remedy helped perfectly, but it's like something you only can do. You can act, as I said before, that you can't put the knowledge, as, as long as I have this huge knowledge, then I will cure everybody. This is not, this is not possible. This is not the reality I see. But you have, to understand, you have to understand a lot of things. I mean, what I say here in Germany is we have so many methods in homeopathy and every method is very welcome. You as a practitioner, you can integrate everything, Sankaran, Scholten, uh, Mahesh Gandhi, everybody has given his own experience to it and we can use it or Mikhail Yakir, you know, in the last 30 years, we learned so many new thing, things, so many new remedies, so many new ideas and you can dance with it, with it. And I like to dance with patients, not to go with a special method and say, this is what, what yeah, you should be under my, uh, my understanding, uh, my knowledge. We have to go into the patient. Like we can say, when you drive in a car, the patient is a driver, and you sit next to him, and the patient goes a different path through his life, and you just say, uh-huh, interesting, yeah? You follow the patient. In my understanding, in my practice, this is very helpful. Sometimes patients say, you know, it was not the remedy what helped me completely, but you're, un you're following me. Your understanding my life circumstances helped me, helped me too. Uh -huh. On, and one day it will come that the right symptom, the right moment, and then it will get much more better. This is what I see. Yeah, I have shown this in cases. Yes. I have been through different uh, understandings. Recently, I gave a we gave a seminar, Jürgen Weiland and me, about children cases. Now I will. I put, we will hopefully give this seminar in um, February. In February, yeah. So we'll see that you had, I had this one case, case, I had no idea, but the remedy came through a dream. Yeah. So um, we just got a question, kind of uh, plays into this theme that is, mm -hmm. um, do you think in the scope of healing, if the individual's destiny plays into this process. Yeah, sure. You know, what, what, what do we know about a person's destiny? 
We mm -hmm. don't know. We can, we can like, like, uh, like the, uh, the navigation system, the patient puts, the, if someone puts on, uh, switches on the navigation, he gives in, I want to be there. Yeah. But then, then you can drive over different hills. Yeah. Right, right. So I am, I am open and willing to go to all these hills. You say, aha, uh -huh, good, okay. You want to go right, but I think left, you want to go right, but I think we should get left, but I let you yeah. go right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I'm at the next corner, I will tell you, no, you go left. It's like a guidance with, which is, um, is, should be smooth. Right. Because otherwise people, I'm, I mean, for me, the life situation now is the beginning of the process that we should learn that not anybody knows that something is better or that this level, or no, this is here, the, the better homeopath, the best homeopath, and the, the, the patient is here to ask for help. We should learn to look into each other's eyes, yeah? You should say, okay, we are both on the path through life. Yes. So and I'm, I'm willing to go with you. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So recently, um, you know, there has been this term in modern psychology, which is quite familiar to homeopaths, which is called the stuck place. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if you could talk about that. So there's the stuck part. What do we do with that? Sure. Yeah. yeah. How do we even get there and know what the stuck part is? Yeah, sure, sure. Everybody is free. Uh, the, 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 uh, I mean, Hahnemann says, in, you know, I am very fond of Hahnemann and the organon. I base everything on the organon. Hahnemann says in, I hope, 217, he says, the health is the freedom is freedom of everything. So freedom for us, homeopath, path should be the main goal. We should be free and leave, let the others free too. But the stuck place is something which is not free, okay? So to help someone to go slowly, slowly out of the stuck place, this is, is something you have to learn. I mean, I believe it has to be learned, uh, be learned in school, yeah? That's why you have all the schools, in order to see what could be the remedy to give now. Just give a remedy. It's not that we say this is a stuck place and the patient can't get out of this. This is not fair. Give a remedy and see what it does. Why? Right. So sometimes what I feel um, is the stuck place is when you get you get the same story over and over and over again. You can, I just saw somebody again that I saw in 1999 and a couple of times in between. And mm -hmm. now in 2020, it is still the exact same story. Yeah, this, this is possible because we all, when we come to, I mean, this is the kind of understanding through spirituality. When we come to us, we have something on, on our plan, yeah? We want to grow out of it. You know, as we, school, uh, life is school experience. Some people get stuck in the fifth class or stuck in the second class. But it is, I can't say it's their own decision because that's why they come to you and say, okay, I'm stuck in the fifth class and it will take 15 years for me to come out of this or even 20 or even when I learn at the age of 84, it's enough. Yeah, because school is in uh, life is a school experience. We have to learn. You can't be, Hahnemann says in Organon paragraph nine, the healthy, a healthy human state. It means he talks about a state. What means to be in a state? It means to be in the moment, in the moment of health. But this often can't last 
because the old stories and all the life problems, they, they bring you immediately back into something else and back. But if this patient comes back after 20 years, what you said of, of treatment, it means he wants some more, he wants some other remedies. Yeah, he wants either some other remedies or you have to repeat the same remedy again. This is what I often see. They come after five or six years. They tell me, okay, every symptoms, every symptom disappeared. You know, I got so much better, but now I have the, the same problem again. Okay, then I repeat the remedy that for that we have all five. It's, you know? Yeah, wow. and say, okay, we try it, but sometimes it doesn't work. Then we have to go and the next step. At least they were happy at the beginning and they want some more. Homeopathy is not. This is an illusion. You are sick and healthy and then you stay healthy for your whole life. It can't be. I like your smile, Sandra. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? It can't be that we... That we, we uh, Love is, it's only in fairy tales, they live happily forever after. I mean, only fairy tales tell you that. When, when I was a child, we, on, I, I was born short after Second World War, wow. yeah, only fairy tales. And uh, my mother was telling all the fairy tales and I asked my mother, what is after the prince met the princess? How do they live? My mother said, I don't know. And this is true because it doesn't exist. There is no happily ever after. No. Yeah. I this have... is what I learned after 30 years of, I, I, I deal 35 years, morning from Monday to Saturday with patients. And I like it because I don't want to take over this whole responsibility, but I'm with you. This is, I look into the patient's eyes as I look now into your eyes, all of you. <laughs> yeah. And I have a couple of questions here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the first one is how do we deal with skeptical patients? Hmm. The best thing is to hope that you get a remedy what will help him. And if not, or her, if not, I have skeptical patients too. For example, more women come normally to homeopathy with their children and they are happy and the, the fathers, they see, ha ha, not bad. And then the father comes, has high blood pressure, yeah, a lot of problems in companies or whatsoever. And so they are skeptic. Yeah. With these little tiny pills, okay, you say, I, I don't have anything else. Mm -hmm. And the more free you are, and say, okay, I'm, I don't have to persuade anyone to go into that uh, direction. They have to experience this. Life is an experience. Every day when you wake up in the morning, you experience life. And you can't say this is the future or so. You have to experience it yourself. And if the patient begins to experience it, he will be persuaded. Sure. I and if not, wait for another patient. <laughs> yes. Here's another question. If you give a remedy and the patient says, who is a homeopath? Oh, we're talking about treating another homeopath. That's a good one. <laughs> says, I thought this was supposed to be gentle, swift, and so on. Here I am 10 years later. Uh, when you as a homeopath see, see movement and the patient herself or himself say they are stuck, how do we understand this? So I yeah. mean, as a homeopath, you see the movement, you see it, the, the patient has gr gr grow, grown, grown, yeah. 
grown, but you, but the patient himself doesn't see it. This, I, 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 do I understand it right? The patient doesn't see that he has grown. Okay, you know, this is, uh, I don't, I know this only in German to say, it's like he has to wake up to, to see it, to learn to see it. But in a way you can't say, I believe you are better, but if you don't believe you are better, you are wrong. This is not, this is not, I into I, as what I said, you know, you, then you don't look, you say, aha, uh -huh. you believe that you are not better. Tell me what should be better because the patient is important, not your own opinion is important in homeopathy. Right, right. This is how I do it. Yeah, they often do this, but okay. Repeat the remedy, I would suggest first. Repeat the remedy or change the remedy. Because not that you always, I don't always agree on everything. My God, they are free. People are free. Freedom, paragraph 217. I hope this is the right number. Yeah. <laughs> So it means freedom. The patient has to be free. As Hanuman says, the unprejudiced observer, yeah, we have to be unprejudiced. If the patient feels something has to get better, we have to follow his ideas. Process, or yeah, yeah. Or his process, yes, right. So there's another question here that I don't quite understand, but I'll just read it. Can you comment about systems of homeopathy that seem far removed from confirming remedy prescriptions through provings? I don't really understand this. Can you comment yeah. what system? Hmm. Uh, proving uh, systems, what, what do you mean by system? Yeah. Hi, can I clarify it? That was my yes, question. Please. Oh yes, okay, good. Oh, hi. So I'm a third year student. Um, so yes. this is what I mean by that question. There are systems of homeopathy. Uh, Tynus Smith's um, Inspiring Homeopathy is one of them, where he, you have the seven archetypal journeys that a soul can make in their process. So long story short, there's ways of assessing people in a totality where they are in their personal journey, and you prescribe on that. The oh, Joshi yeah. map is another system, everything on the periodic table. It's the systems that take what a person is going through in essences, and there's a fit, but it's just getting really far removed from being anchored in the proving of the remedy. I mean, in the symptoms oh. of the provings, yeah. Okay. Yes, it's, it's a, the evolutionary uh, uh, method also. It's all welcome, you know, but don't move or, you know, confuse yourself with all the different methodologies because this is a kind of method here. It's understandable only through mind, you know. Homeopathy cannot be done only by mind. It has to be done by something what is understandable. If this is too confusing, go back to the symptoms, but try to understand what is behind the symptom. Yeah, I mean, I would suggest if you're a beginner, you are a beginner, don't go into too big methodology. Just begin step by step, as I did it with phosphorus, for example, yeah? The understanding of phosphorus by that time, I mean, Homeopaths have treated patients over 200 years quite successfully. Even Hanavan with 84 remedies, or um, I don't know, 80 or 200, I don't know how many remedies he had by that time. So go step by step. And homeopathy, this I can assure you, will take you by the hand and bring you further. This is what I experienced. I began with very simple, and then you go, go one step higher and one step higher. What is very important is, what very important is that you don't focus on the cure. 
Don't focus on cure. Focus on the moment. Be in the moment. Not saying, this is a patient. I, now I understand the whole method, etc., etc., And the cure would be there. Oh my God, who knows? Who knows? Just go with the patient step by step. See what he is showing you. Give a remedy for this. Wait for the answer. Be patient, patient. Yeah? Not only the patient has to be patient. Uh, the homeopath has to be patient too. Go step by step. Yeah? Don't go into a huge over, over model what is done by mind. Homeopathy is not mind. Homeopathy is, is a kind of spiritual understanding of life. Yes. Okay I'm... with you? Mich? 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 Okay. Yeah, okay. Let's say so. Uh, yeah, if, if the answer is okay for you, do though. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. So, Anne, this brings us really to the, uh, you know, to homeopathy being, you know, j just part of life and stepping into people's lives at particular periods of difficulty or whatever it is. So I wanted to ask you about your practice because you see incredibly serious cases. Yeah, sure. And you know, and that's often a question from, from students is like, how do I deal with all of this and the medications and the, you know, the, the deep uh, and very progressed pathology? How yeah. do Medications, medications and, uh, are important. Uh, a gen I have a general rule. My general rule is I don't take patients off their medications because I tell them medications are uh, tablets or any medications are matter. Yeah, it's matter. Normal medicine believes that the Men is matter, yeah, the physical body, and we treat with matter, matter. And it's, it works sometimes in high blood pressure, etc., etc. But it, it works, but we homeopaths don't treat like this. We treat the energy, the vital force, with the vital force of a substance which does not exist anymore. <laughs> okay, we treat vital force with vital force. So how can vital, vital force, uh, the vital force influences matter? This is what we believe. And because this is our general rule. So when people are on medications, they take matter for their matter as a human, uh, as a physical body. But they have never treated the vital force with the matter, because vital force is still suffering. This is what we know, because we have to, we have to understand, we have to understand the vital force, which is in, in pain. Yeah. And uh, let's give an example, for example, high blood pressure. If you treat someone with high blood pressure, I never say, stop this, your medication. I said, continue with your medication, but call me. I, be, I mean, my telephone is always busy. I have not only telephone, more WhatsApp and whatsoever, all this, this technical uh, stuff. I like it very much. So, because I want to be informed, when you give someone a good remedy and, or, or appropriate remedy, and they take uh, high blood, uh, blood pressure remedies, in that moment, the, the remedy acts, the vital force gets better, the blood pressure lowers, okay? Then they call me and say, oh, my blood pressure is going under 100. Then I can say, okay, you, you reduce a little bit your, your medication. My experience is that people, trust me completely in that moment because they know I am very responsible with this. And this is with all the remedy, all the medications. In that moment, they understand, uh-huh, even um, 
all this uh, psychopharmaca, yeah? It's the same. I don't care at all. Not at all. And so they say, can we take it? Yes, sure. Or I have so many patients who went through chemotherapy. You know, they call me and say, we are under chemotherapy. I said, okay, no problem. We are going to deal with this. Not stop it. Not at all. But they will stop for sure. It, one day they will stop their medication, not in chemotherapy, for sure not, because cancer is a difficult subject, yeah? Which you work with quite a bit, right? Mm, mm. So, so there's these challenges, different yeah. kind of challenges, yeah. not necessarily just the remedy as a challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also looking in at... Order, we have to understand that when we believe on the vital force, when the vital force is suffering, yeah, it's suffering. The, uh, before it comes into the physical body and generates uh, uh, tumors, cancer, it, it suffers already for a long time. This is not something what just happens to you. So in order to understand this, you have to be careful, to carefully guide people back into their lives. And this is what I'm doing. Yes, yeah. that's getting back to the, to the question, how do we get to the depth of the case, right? Wouldn't that be even more challenging when you have such progressed pathology? Sure, sure. Sometimes it can't open up, but it's always, it is always a try. Don't have any rule in it and say, you have to be, un understand, you know, I even I had um, a relative who got cancer, yeah? And I, all of a sudden, no, nobody understood it, young, a young woman. And I said, okay, I can treat you here. It's already 20 years ago. I can treat you here, but you have to change your life. Only then you have a chance. You are young, and she changed completely she, her life completely, and now she's twenty years no relapse, nothing anymore. But she understood in that moment that something has to change. In that moment, for this, in order to help people to change their life, they need guidance. Everybody needs it. Mm -hmm. So um, I have this one question going back to Dr. Hahnemann and uh, you know he call, calls homeopathy the medical art and I wanted yeah. to see what you have to say about that. The medical art, yes. Hahnemann begins in paragraph one. Oh, I don't have the English organ on. I only know the organ and by by heart uh, in German in German by heart. Um, in paragraph one, he says that the only can you can you tell me the organ in German, uh, in English? It begins with the the doctor, the medical doctor is uh, 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 has to help patients. Yeah, we have to wait for the for I for, I forgot to put the English organ on in front of my shelf. So, and it ends in paragraph three with the, with the healing artist. He, he talks about art. What is art? Please tell me, what is art? I don't have a good answer. It's a creative process. It's a creative process. Everybody has to write something to say something. What is art? What do you need? What, what uh, skills do you need in order to do art? Because Hahnemann begins in paragraph one with, with the medical. The physician's highest and only calling is to make the sick healthy as. Yes, right. As Very is. good. Yeah. I know yeah. this German. Okay. Right. And then he goes in paragraph two, he goes how to do, how it works. Uh, uh, restoration health. And then three says to be a genuine practitioner of the medical art. A physician must clearly re realize what has to be cured in disease that is in each single case of disease. Second, right. clearly realize what is curative in medicines that is in each particular medicine. 
Three, be aware of how to adapt what is curative in medicine to what he has discerned to be undoubtedly diseased in the patient, according to clear principles. Right, right. But, but in German, it's different. Because in, in German, in paragraph three, the end is if he knows all this, yeah, if he knows all this, then he is a true practitioner of the healing art. Huh? Yeah, I use now, er uh, ist der wirkliche Heilkünstler. So the true practitioner of the healing art. It means we have to go from the, uh, the, the physician to the artist. Yeah, we have to be artists, not physicians. Yeah, okay, we begin as a physician and end as the artist. I mean, isn't this a wonderful idea that we all have to be, be artists? But now tell me, what do you need to be an artist? Everybody write something or say something. You just have to put off the, the um, put on the, the mic, yeah? Say, what is art? Everybody knows what is art. It's an first, expression of first, self. Huh? Expression of self. Expression of self. More. The process of expressing yourself. Mm. Or recognizing what is happening in your environment. I mean, be, be very, be very simple. I like to be very simple. Yeah. I don't like to have a lot of fantasy. Very simple. In order to be, for example, a painter, you have to, to know an handwerk. What's, what's uh, the you have to know your, your, your trade or you have to have yeah, your tools. The Intuition. Tool. You have to understand how to deal with colors, right? Yeah, it means you have to understand, first of all, what you are doing. Okay, what I said before, you have to understand that you search for the vital force, the energy, what gives the patient the headache, and you have to understand the, all the substances or some of the substances which were diluted into the spirit. So, and then you have to know it. This is what you know. You have to know your, di your, your repertory. This is very important, but art is even more. What is, what, what is more in art? Art is intuition. intuition. Art is freedom, right? An artist is always free. An artist is never someone who says, it has to be done like this. For example, I'm, I'm, I'm an artist from, from nine to, to five, but the rest, I'm not an artist. This is not an artist. Artist, art can come in the night, right? It means you have to be open to be free. Heinemann gives us the hint. He said, be free, whatever you do. And out of this freedom, all these different methods arose, you know, Sankaran, Scholten, etc. Because they all used to be free. But they say not, they, they, they should not say this is how it should be. This is not freedom. Free, freedom is you can do this, you can do this, look at this, look at this corner, etc. Right? And this is art. You all can think in the next days about art. I like to go into um, museums to see the pictures, what they, what they believe. What they, are, what they are generating. And when you see the tradition of art in the last hundreds of years, how they changed from the middle age to now, etc. What we are now, we are completely open. We are free with art. So, right. So, um, no other answer. Is this okay? Do this. Good. Good. So uh, I just wonder if there are questions to close this. Um, if anybody wants to ask a question. Um, you know, we had a question in particular about 30C potency and how long you give it and how often. 
But I think that's kind of hard to answer just theoretically. You would kind uh, it's of it's in, in paragraph three of the organon. Hahnemann says, anpassen, to fit it. Yeah, it means it has to fit. If the patient is very severely sick, yeah, you can repeat, repeat, repeat to 30 uh, C uh, constantly. But if you are treating someone uh, on, an, on a different level, you can give it once in a week or once in a month. It depends. I mean, this is what artists do. Yeah, <laughs> back to art. Yeah, yeah. artists. They follow the intuition. This is how I do it. I follow my intuition. I see, okay. I mean, in a way, I try to adjust. Fit means to adjust something. Hanuman adjusts is. He says, like, for example, you have your shoe size is, uh, I don't know, your, in, in America, the sizes. For example, in Germany, we say we have size 38 shoe size but so 42 doesn't fit me at all and 33 doesn't fit me at all too it means what when we give a, a, a potency the potency has to fit to the disease to the state of the patient to the energy of the patient actually to everything and it's not only the 30C, sometimes it's better to give an L LM potency, but sometimes it's even better to give 10M. It has to fit to the patient, to the pathology, to the problems, to the life circumstances, to the vital force of the patient. A very sick, is a very weak patient, I would not give a 10M, I would give LM potencies. So, I mean, to adjust it, this is important. I mean, it's, it was a very nice conversation. I have a, a question to you. Do you want, to continue, want us to continue like this? Yes. Okay. Like repeated, we repeated topics. We had another question about Corona, but I know that you didn't want to get into this right now. Oh, well, I have some ideas about it, but let's put this to another time. It will, it will take a while, Corona. I mean, uh, for Corona, I have my, my, my own, own uh, understanding. It's, I mean, let me give you some sent, one sentence. When a patient comes to you and has headache, you don't say you shouldn't have headache, right? You don't say, what a stupid idea to have headache, right? So, the whole world is now facing with the pandemic, which is called COVID-19. So, if I say this shouldn't be there, I am not a homeopath. A homeopath looks at it and wonders, what is this? I mean, I do not have an answer. I did, I did a video look at my, uh, my um, website. I have a, even made it in English uh, at the beginning of the pandemic. I understood this is something what is very new to us. Don't be scared. It's the beginning of a new life. Why, why do I say this? because I, we have never faced a situation like this ever. And this is what I like, because only now something new can begin. And I fully trust. I like it when your, your new president said he wants to cure the soul of America. Yes. Because the soul, you know, it's not red and blue. It's a soul. It's like in, in homeopathy. It's the vital force. Let, actually, the vital force is the soul in a way. Yeah? We will, I will talk about the soul in the children seminar in January. February, okay? February right? February, sorry. Yeah, yeah. February. most likely February. middle of February will... Let everybody know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you let everybody know. I will talk about the soul because we call this seminar the, the soul of children. I'm very strong into soul. 
energies. Okay? And for me, now, the soul is, has to do with the corona situation now. Because, you know, corona is a crown. Okay? It's a crown. And even the, the virus has the spikes look, look like a crown. Yeah. Trust, please. It will come. I don't know when. I have no clue when. I, I have no clue what. And, and I have no clue how. But I trust. Thank you, Anne. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. It was well, nice yes, seeing yeah. you all. Yes. Hope to see you all next time. Yes, and if you have any suggestions, you know my email. If you'd like to have any topics covered, we'll talk about that. Okay. Okay. Bye -bye. Thank Bye -bye. you.